yeah. I love my HBCU. And boy, I love it, love it. I love it, love it. I love my HBCU. And man, I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. Man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loud. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouth. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, yeah. he know what he be talking about. Talkin Mike about. and Charles, Talk. they know what they be talking about. Yeah. Talkin they about. compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a loud, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor uh, Yes Sir yes, and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. Yes. Good evening. Welcome to episode 523 of Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab radio show and podcast. The show that covers the sporting HBCU diaspora. All things HBCU sports for institutions large and small from the NAIA to the NCAA. A, we share insights, information on HBCU sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics to facilitate the story of HBCU sports athletic programs and the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, A.D. Drew. Joining me with my co-host today is Brian Fulford, the sports rap takeover of the lab on the holiday. No assignments yeah. to do today. No assignments. Don't don't even bother turning in assignments today. Just come in and sign the roll, and then sit yeah. back, sit back and relax. Don't 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 be that one. Don't be that professor, Brian. I'm just asking you. Please don't be that professor. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you you know how when the, when the calendar just falls, especially when you take an online classes, and the teachers just be like, "Well, you said all assignments are due on Tuesday by midnight." I don't give a dog on that. It's a dog on holiday. Right. And does and does midnight Eastern time or is it midnight Pacific time? See, that's where you gotta know what your school's um uh calendar is set on because they tell you and don't play that I was in a different time zone crap because it don't work. <laughs> you, you better know if you're in central time, it's eleven o'clock, but if you out there on the left coast, it's nine o'clock, your local time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we are filming from our home studios and sending the signal live to our KCOH 1230 AM uh, radio studios with the Texas Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper, in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University. Today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency, a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics. Brian, yeah. holiday. How's it been going for you so far? For, for, show me your hands, Brian. Show me your hand. They all still, still there. Me. Just want, just want to make sure they was all still there. I ain't gonna make you sure. I ain't gonna make you sure your feet. I appreciate man. it. I, appreciate it. I, was, I wasn't Listen. showing no toes. I wasn't showing no toes. I hadn't got a pedicure in a while, so I ain't showing no toes. That, that's TMI. Of course, it's it's, it's it's still not dark where you at. So. We have yeah. to do that uh, finger check tomorrow, my brother. Hey, no, I, I plan on probably staying inside. I don't, I don't have any any good uh, spots to go watch the fireworks, unfortunately. So, I guess I'm gonna be in the house. Hey, you know, once you once you've seen them, you've seen them all. But, but they're still they're still fun to look at. I, I don't care. You know, they're still yeah. fun to, to look at. And, and G Boone, thank you, because I really did not realize that it was 15 days between the 4th of July and Juneteenth until hmm. I saw that earlier today on somebody's uh, tweet. It may, may have been something that you said, Dr. G Boone, was some, but somewhere I saw this earlier today. I just like, well, I never even put two or two together that it was 15 days. I didn't do the math. Imagine me not doing the math on something, Brian. It's like, I, I yeah, that's it. That's a strange number, 15. You know, it doesn't really have any synergenic meaning. It, it just, you know, it's 15. It just, just happens. It is what it is. It is what it is. Exactly. Coincidence. Co coincidence. But yeah. Yeah. Now, now, Brian, 
fireworks for adults. Let's be real. Mm-hmm. Fireworks are really for the kids. For the most part, uh, for, for the kids so they can go ooh and ah and all the pretty colors. And, you know, when you, when you take young kids, it's like, oh, what color is that? That's blue, that green, that red. And then as they get older, you know, it's for, it's the beating spot. So you can go, you can go back on some uh, honeys. You know what, you know what I'm saying? As you start getting up there in age. But for the adults, for the adults, especially if you watch a fireworks from like the park or something like that. I mean, are we really paying attention to the, to the fireworks or are we saying pass me another one? I think honestly, Drew. I, I as I heard you talking, and you about know this, what like I'm I, saying. Pass, pass, pass me another one. You know what I'm talking about. I do, but but I think I think I think that we I think we have a fascination with explosions because we don't. Most of us, ninety nine percent of us, don't see explosions on a daily. Most of us don't deal with things that go boom on a daily without so, without running. As I said, 99% of us <laughs> don't experience that kind of stuff. So that's why I think fireworks are still fascinating because it is still fast. Even when, look, down here in the Disney area, Disney shoots off fireworks every night. But I still am fascinated by them whenever I'm in the area and I see them from a distance. I, I, I think it's, it, call me crazy, maybe it's because I've lived in Florida for too long. It's like watching a rocket or a space shuttle go up in the air. It still is something that you don't see every day. No matter how often it happens in Florida, you don't see it every day. And it still is like, wow. I, I, until we start having automobiles that or land craft that hovers above the ground significantly, I, I'm gonna always, I think I'm going to always be fascinated by things that go in the air and go boom. Just you know something. You know something. That's one thing that I have not seen that I want to see is space something shuttle moves? launch. Oh, no, okay. space shuttle okay. launch, okay. space shuttle, space shuttle landing. I've never seen it. I know our, our people in Houston. I know the space shuttle typically lands in Houston or California when it lands, and typically takes off from uh, Cape Canaveral there in Florida. So you know, shout out to y'all. Y'all get to see something that a lot of us. Never get to witness. Look, uh, it's anytime you're seeing something going. I remember the first time. Uh, this is all the way back in '98, and uh, one of the shuttles were actually launching. Um, a bunch of coworkers went, literally went up to the roof of the office building that we were on, and I, and at first I was like, "Where's everybody going?" They're like, "Oh, the shuttle's about to launch." I'm like, "Really? So where are we going?" They're like, "We're going up to the roof." I'm like, "Oh, you can see it from the roof." Like, yeah. So I, you know, you know, I, I went up there, a bunch of, bunch of folks who don't look like us, but I mean, you know, they were fascinated and, and I, I'm not going to lie. I was fascinated too, because just by a, the fact that I could see it from probably about 45 miles from the coast is where I was working. But in the fact that it was a clear day and I could see it and you're just like, you know what? I am kind of fascinated that I, I, I see, I see what y'all see. I see the fascination that y'all see. So there you go. Look, only thing I got on y'all, I've been up, I've been up in the arch multiple times in St. Louis, so I still got I, that. I on did that ride, one y'all. time. I did that. I actually, I did a uh, in St. Louis as a child. We did a helicopter, one of those helicopter tours. Yeah. My one and only time in a helicopter was over top of the uh, the arch in St. Louis. My dad was feeling adventurous, so you know he's like come on we're gonna go for a helicopter ride and i'm like what we what my mom she i don't know if she even opened her eyes but but she went <laughs> she, she went and she strapped you know we were strapped in but boy i had all kinds of crazy visions while i was up there i'm like how'd your sister react i don't even remember i don't i don't remember i just i didn't you know, I just was worried about me and not falling out, even though I'm strapped. I'm, <laughs> even though you know you're strapped in and everything, and there's Wait, all these it was it open? Was it open no, helicopter? No, oh, heck oh, okay. No, no, okay. Heck no, no, God, no. I don't. I think I would have done that. It was a closed door, okay. uh, so you could look out the window. You could see the Mississippi. You could see the arch. Hey, that was good. Good enough. It was good enough for me. It was cool. Just, 
Yeah. Just glad nobody decided to make a phone call while they was uh while they was this up was, in the air and called their cousin the, Ralph. Hey, this was nineteen eighty something, Drew. When no phone <laughs> calls being made. Yeah, oh, they still could have been a phone call to your cousin Ralph while you was up there. Man, look, nineteen eighty something. I uh, come on now, stop uh, it. See, you, 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 you missed that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did. Or your cousin Earl. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. <laughs> now I'm with anyway, you. <laughs> anyway, let's get let's get to some of this uh, HBCU news, man. I want to slide here. Though. This came out. Uh, this came out. Yesterday, courtesy of HBCU Sports, Howard University's the the Mecca Society Collective has announced a name, in, image, and likeness deal with Last Shot, a black-owned and operated energy drink company in Las Vegas, Nevada. Last Shot will pay Howard athletes and company stock to promote their products and share a portion of the sales from their premium drink to help the Mecca Society fun Howard Sports. Last Shot CEO Bo Owen said in a statement that this strategic partnership with the Mecca Society will introduce student athletes to business and stock ownership. So uh, let's see, let me skip down. Launched in 2023, the Mecca, the Mecca Society's objective is to help Howard student athletes take advantage of new NCAA rules to secure NIL partnerships as well as building resources for the Bison Athletic Programs. Right. Somebody getting into the NIL business and is, I mean, they, they signed, it doesn't say they signed a specific team. They just say it's, they signed Howard athletes. So I'm assuming there's a cross section of athletes that they've signed there with Howard or given all Howard athletes an opportunity to promote it. What you think about this, man? Um, I'm, congratulations to the Mecca Society, uh, Howard athletes, because this is these are the kind of deals that uh, are needed. Um, you know, I, I think I think the number of of collectives among HBCU athletic programs is right at about a handful. Um, I know Florida A and M just well a a Florida A and M's first collective. NIL Collective launched their website uh, yesterday, or no, today, I'm sorry, July 4th, today. Um, so that kind of brings, and I think the other schools are Prairie View, Alcorn, Grambling, um, that I'm aware of. But but th this is a good move. I think, you know, I don't know too much about the the, the this particular company. I know Energy Drinks. You know, different people have different opinions. Some people say they're healthy, not healthy for you. Other people swear by um, their their benefits in the instant. You know, um, I wonder any potential. I don't know whether Howard is a Coke or a Pepsi school. Most schools are either one or the other. So any potential conflict. How, how, yeah. How does that work for those particular? Um, you know, exclusivity contracts. deals, those if contracts. there's anything like that. Yeah. yeah, and those contracts. So um it'll be interesting to kind of see. But but if it yields a small final, even if it, you know, yielded a a thousand dollars a semester for each student athlete, uh, you know, that's a that's a win. That's a start. It's a win. You know, now <laughs> It just it's a good start, and I and I think that's that's what most collectives want to be able to do. They want to be able to partner with a business, and then through that business, be able to get athletes to do promotional things or whatever, and then that kind of yields financial benefits for the student athlete. So, props to the Mecca yeah. Society. Good for them. Yeah, and if you notice, uh, they're not getting paid cash, Brian. They're getting paid in stock. And you, obviously, as a person with a business degree, just like I do, now you've got to go into learning how to trade stocks, learning how to do those those projections. You know, stocks, buy low, stay, sell high, correct? When do you get rid of that stock? Who do you sell it to? 
So mm -hmm. those different things. What market is this listed on? Is this a penny stock? Is it? I'm assuming this is a penny stock. So what uh, exchange is that? Is that stock listed on? So all those things that they will have to get educated about when they uh, do these. Uh, and and Brian, speaking of um, NIL opportunities, I, I shared this with you guys earlier. I wanted you to uh, take a look at this, Brian. Mm -hmm. What do you... What did you think about this? You know, the NCAA passed legislation that you can put advertising on your field now. And then I come across this video on Facebook a couple of days ago where Adidas uh -huh. put that logo on Texas. I don't know what logo that is on the right hand side. Yeah. Somebody I don't can either. help me out with that logo on the right hand side. Please help me out with that logo on the right hand side. I'll tell you what, when I saw this, when I saw this video, Drew, I thought I didn't see the whole video. I saw the image uh, of just like the I, I thought that was somebody's joke. Like, I thought that was a joke. Like somebody just put a piece of tape over the midfield and just wrote Adidas on it. I was I was like, oh, that's funny. Y'all are funny. But no, that's a whole that's a whole that's a whole thing. But uh, that's a reveal. Yeah, that's a that's a review. I mean, good for good for Texas Tech, good for Adidas, good for Texas Tech. Um, what G Boom says is a ten year deal that yeah, they signed. G Boom, what logo was that on the right side? You down in that area? Uh, obviously, we recognize the Adidas logo that was to the left of the Texas Tech logo. Help me out with what logo that was on the right. That looked familiar. Ah, I there we go. Where it is? Ah, Patrick Mahomes logo. Okay. Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, uh, probably his Which uh, makes foundation sense. logo or whatever. Which makes sense because he's a uh, Texas Tech grad. Yeah, yep, exactly. Hey, that that's positive. You know, I'm, I'm you know, a ten year deal. What what do you think the numbers on that on that is? And, and you know what? You know what's fascinating, Drew? Here's Texas Tech, a school in the Big Twelve. I mean, they're not hurting they, for money. They still in the Big Twelve, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm still no, I, I, yeah you laugh, but I'm, I'm well, being yeah, serious. Yeah. No, no, no. I got you. I, I understand what you're saying, but but no, just you know that that that's the that's the goal right there for athletic programs. Now, you know that that's what you want a ten year deal um, when you've got maybe six home games a year. So what's that? Probably at least in the ballpark of 60 games in which that logo is going to appear. Um, Cause all the TV. games are televised somewhere. Yeah. And I noticed also what they're doing something on the helmet. And I mean, obviously the, the logo, the Adidas logo is already on the Jersey in the uniform. So I, and the, I shoes. and the shoes, and I guess the helmet is just one extra spot to throw a logo, but yeah. Hey man. I and mean, can't wait to see and who the first HBCU program will be to get a sponsor uh, on their on their field somewhere on their field. And stick, taking it back to uh, HBCUs, you know, a lot of our I won't say a lot of our probably half of our HBCUs in the SWAC use their football field. It also dubs as a soccer field. So add in those extra seven or so home games. Those are other opportunities, seven home games per year. Those are other opportunities that you may have to have your logo out there, Brian. Just something to throw out there if you're a uh, if you're an HBCU fan. Last one before I get into the break, Brian. Uh, the oldest HBCU has its accreditation reaffirmed. Cheney University of Pennsylvania has experienced difficulties recently, but the school has made a concerted effort to overcome its difficulties. Monday was a landmark day in their process as the Middle States Commission on Higher Education announced that uh, Cheney's accreditation was reaffirmed, officially remo removing one of the oldest HBCUs in the United States from probation according to a report by the Philadelphia Inquirer. So uh, they said the reaffirm reaffirmation did not come without a fight. And you can go on to read more about this. Uh, this is also from HBCU Sports. Anything uh, you want to get on that? You know, it's great to see when our HBCUs, first of all, it's, we should never have 
a situation where our HBCUs are fighting for their accreditation. But it's great to see HBCUs are able to fight back off of probation and keep their accreditation without what has happened to some of our HBCUs uh, ultimately being forced to close their doors due to accreditation or being decertified due to accreditation issues. Your comments, Brian. Uh, just congratulations to Cheney and all the people, uh, Cheney, uh, Cheney University and all the people who worked to uh, to get them back up into in, into a, a place where they're they can grow, you know, and, and thrive and grow. So congrats to Cheney. All right. And with that, we're going to take our first break. You are watching Dr. Kavir's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. That's Brian. I'm AD. We'll be back in just a moment. Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowerment J-A-X. The human voice has always connected audiences with experiences. Major brands all across America have trusted Kevers Voice time and time again. Conversational, powerhouse, intelligent, and sincere. That's the voice you need for your creative marketing process. K-E-A-V-E-R-S-V-O-I-C-E dot com. Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice, Kevers Voice dot com. Always on, all the time. Nope. Nope. Come on, him? Ooh, I like him. Quick, the quicker picker-upper. Bounty picks up messes quicker, and each sheet is two times more absorbent, so you can use less. He's an eight. He's a nine. Bounty, the quicker picker-upper. From novice to aficionado, find yourself here. High quality cigars plus personal customer service. Slow Burn is Waco's only mobile cigar lounge featuring a meticulous curated collection of premium cigars. Visit our website, www.slowburnwaco.com. That's www.slowburnwaco.com. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah, and who's about, who's about. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay attention, what? cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yes. We are back here on Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Brian Fulford, AD Drew on this Independence Day holiday. Uh, Brian, before we go any further, let's give a couple of shout outs to some people who are checking in with us. Uh, first one in, Brian, take a guess. Uh, take a guess. Ooh, don't get me, first don't one, get first, me wrong here. First one in. First uh, one in. Probably Chuck Hunt. You, you got it. First one in, Chuck Hunt. <clears throat> uh, shout out uh, G Booms there. Lennon Blow. Is there Edward Moore joining us uh, from the grill? Lennon's uh, got the jokes, by the way. Hold on, you, you, you don't don't let that pass by because I can't wait for August twenty fifth when Lennon sends me a DM apologizing for all the smack he's been talking over the last two three weeks. I love the confidence. I love the confidence, but um, I, I just want that text uh, via in, via tech via uh, X on august 25th Lennon. that's all i want that's all i want go all ahead. right all right and, and i'm gonna throw this out there Lennon. make sure you say that to him when he's on the ong strike zone so all the so all the family as well as well but i want that august 25th i want that august 25th <laughs> tweet and and yes you can also send it to me on wednesday uh but i want that august 25th after the game guys don't 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 wait long now don't wait long don't wait too yeah. long uh, 
Ever, let's see, Everboy is there. The, the provost himself is checking in, what, uh, auditing his class on a holiday. Doc, it's a holiday. I, no, I, but I guess I guess when you're in that position, you're always working when you when you're at the level of a Doctor Cavill. See, good good to know that we weren't spending the whole show talking about grilling tips and eating hot dogs and hamburgers and ribs, um, because you know the perfect you know the the dean you know is checking in. So it's good to know we weren't uh, completely off the rails. There you go. There you go. Get uh, Gail Hinton. What's going on? Good to see uh, Gail. Gail. Always good to see you. All right, Brian. Media days start up next week, Brian. Oh boy, start- it's time. It's, it's it's that time. What started off in the S I A C? So, Brian, I'm gonna ask you this: What do you think are your your top stories or uh, top questions that you would like to ask going into S I A C Media Day? Wow. Um. Top stories. Well, I I think you I think you have to start with who's asking the question who's next. Uh, Benedict had such a strong run over the last two years. I mean, unbeaten two 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 seasons with unbeaten records. They were the most dominant force in. Division two HBCU football in the SIC, presumably with uh, with a new head coach. Many players that were a part of that program success, having either graduated or transferred, it would open the door for other programs. So who's next? You know, will Fort Valley State continue on the upward trajectory? towards being one of those top three teams in the program. Um, will you see Alabama State, or not, Al- Albany State. Albany State. State. Will Albany State. Wrong ASU. Yeah, I know. Uh, will <laughs> Albany State be, um, be a strong contender and rise back to where they were? They had a coaching change. Uh, Coach Quinn Gray did a great job of keeping the program steady. Now, can he take it to the next level? Um, some traditional powers, Miles and Tuskegee, um, have had new coaches over the last couple of years. Will Miles and Tuskegee find their way back to the top? And and then I think one thing I'm really interested in finding, Edward Waters has been making a nice steady climb over the last couple of years. They have one of the elders, this is weird to say, they have one of the elder coaches elder statesman in the conference in terms of years at their program. Um, Toriano Morgan, along with Byron Brown at Lane, have been at their school for four years, which that is the longest run of any co- of any of the 13 coaches. Uh, is it 13 or 12? 13. Yeah, any of the 13 coaches, four years is the longest run. So will Edward Waters move to a position where they can be a top three or maybe even be in a top two team. So those are just some of the things that I'm interested to start to analyze and find out once. And I think the biggest thing drew is you got to wait to get to that media day to find out what everyone's quarterbacks look like. How many, how many returners, how many new transfers, because a lot of that information is just not disseminated right now, you know? Yeah, yeah. The rosters are going to be a key thing. Who's on the roster? Who, who's remaining? Uh, who transferred? Where we know a lot of Allen's players transferred to Clark Atlanta, but I'm pretty sure there were some other transfers within the conference also that we just may or may not be aware of right now. You know, Brian, you asked who's next before Benedict dominance over the last two years you probably had a good 20 year stretch where it seemed like it was tuskegee and albany state dominated the siac and then about the last for about a 10 year stretch in there the back half of that stretch miles yep. got it got into the uh, party right so like you said will those three traditional powers return well i'm not even gonna say three the two traditional powers, because 
Albany State and Tuskegee are the two tra two traditional powers within the SIAC. Miles was a good new in up and comer. And really, when you look before Benedict, those three pretty much won just about every championship. Yeah, you had a couple sprinkled in here and there. I remember when Kentucky State and Fort Valley played each other. But you always would have one, if not two of those teams in the SIAC championship game. So what is the direction of the conference? Uh, hopefully I get to sit down with the commissioner. One question I want to ask the commissioner, what's your reflection on year one of divisionless SIAC? Because uh, for the first time since I want to say either 2011 or 2012, the SIEC went went divisionless. So, and there were some exciting races there going down the stretch. I mean, two weeks into the season, there were five, six teams who had a realistic shot of winning the conference. Now. We all know all those teams were pretty much playing for second place because right, Benedict second was, place, pretty, right. was pretty much guaranteed a spot. But that race for number two was exciting. Oh, and yes, it was. Yeah. If you remember, that last weekend, Ooh. the schedule gods yeah. favored the SIAC because everybody who was in position to take that number two spot played in a meaningful game against a meaningful opponent above 500 where if they win, there, there were teams who if they, they won, they, they went in, but if they lost in the other team in this other game in rival games, mind you, mm -hmm. if they lose, then that shifts the balance of the power and, and the nerves and what the nerds say as far as tiebreakers go. So for me, it was exciting that we didn't just have, East versus West, and having two Eastern opponents playing in the championship game. Whereas if if we'd have been under the old format, it would have been Miles and Tuskegee coming down from, from the West to face Benedict, with Benedict having sewn up number one so long ago. That, that would have uh, made the Fountain City Classic just a meaningless classic. But that, that added spice to that classic because we, the winner of that classic had a shot to get in. Now, Albany State won it, but if Fort Valley defeats Albany State and a couple of other things happen, Fort Valley is in the championship game. So that's, that's, that's another thing that if I have opportunity to talk to the commissioner, I really want to get his feedback and what – obviously it looked good from the outside, but from the inside, that you always got to tweak it to make it better. What kind of improvements may they be looking at with the with the schedule? Also, the uh, new classic, the NFL Hall of Fame classic, where the two champions will meet from now on. What type of impact would that make for the conference, both from a financial uh, standpoint, from a visual standpoint, because they'll get their game on NFL Network, and just from you know the teams, you know, and hopefully we don't get a dud. The year after one of these teams win the championship where everybody just, you know, coach leaves, all the players leave, and that happens to both teams because of the success of both teams. We ho I hope that doesn't happen uh, during the time of this agreement. And don't forget, Drew, the uh, postseason bowl, the Florida Bowl. You know, you mentioned the, the future. Beach bowl. Uh, I'm sorry, the Beach Bowl. Uh, yeah. I thought it was the Florida Bowl, but anyway, um, it, that the the postseason bowl game with the CIAA, uh, some second, uh, third, represent fourth representative, team. yeah, we we'll say, say representative. representative, yeah, because it and representatives out of both conferences, right? They're not the champions, but most likely a second or third place team, and that's um, what you that, had last year was two third place teams. Right, because the second place teams went to the uh, playoffs, correct? Where well, the SIAC second place team did not. The, the second CIAA, uh, Albany State was second. They didn't go playoffs. No, they did not go to the playoffs. And they weren't the rep. Okay, see, I'm gonna get into see the only 
the only representative out of the uh, SIC was Benedict and the CIAA had both Fayetteville and Union in the playoffs. All right. So, yeah. Okay. Anyway, but in general, you're, you're going to get a team that was probably either top three or four from the division as the representative. So hopefully I said that right. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I just hope that that game, bowl game doesn't wind up like uh, the Pirate of Bowl did in the past where you have well, hopefully they get be- what, what what you should say is hopefully they get better weather conditions because that the the weather conditions for the first year were absolutely miserable. Yes. Uh the, obviously you can't control mother nature but but damn, you know, can you get a little can you get a little break? Uh that that would be nice to get for year 2. So it looked it looked like April in Florida instead of December in Florida. Yeah, day. exactly, exactly. I didn't know, I didn't know, I didn't know Florida rained like that in December. So uh, that that was pretty unfortunate. Bad luck for for them. Hopefully, they get better results in year two. Uh, yeah. And and one other thing, television contracts that should be a conversation to be discussed uh, with uh, them signing deals with HBCU Go. Uh, how does that affect? broadcast entities uh you know just um you know we we have uh relationships and and contracts with various sic schools we being so, black college sports network uh and and you know th- there may be other entities that uh want to broadcast games so how does that play into the exposure of the conference and uh so those are interesting questions and topics that i hope get asked of the commissioner uh while he's able to answer them while you got him and hopefully we get some we get some uh some insights well when when this when i get a chance to go back and re-listen to this segment i'm going to jot down your notes hopefully you jot down my notes and whichever one of us get that opportunity to interview dr holloman we'll see if we can bring those questions up to him let's take a break brian and brian on tuesday show we discuss the homecoming games on the FCS level for our HBCUs. Let's talk Division Two and NAIA homecoming schedule. When we come back from this break, that's Brian. I'm AD. This is Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. We'll be right back. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thins reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, visit us today to take charge of your learning. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball? Who the ball? 
So listen to Professor Yes Sir yes, And pay attention yes, Cause he gonna teach a lesson yes. Back here on Dr. Kavir's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab We've got a couple other people joining us here on the chat Blue Jacket for Life No celebrating 4th of July for me Project 2025 And this country is in a free fall Whoa I'm, try- I'm trying to be happy today But Blue Jacket It's heavy you 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 said something right there, my brother. I totally agree with you right there. Uh, HBCU band talks uh, comes along and says, "Hey guys, yo, hey, our cats, my man Farasi. <laughs> we got jobs, man. We got to keep them black jobs. We no, can't we, be giving away black jobs, man. Farasi, the, the the day I don't shine, show up for one of my black jobs." Somebody else, black, brown, or white, is going to take my black job. So <laughs> exactly. I need I need to show up as much as I can. Man, speaking of Farasi, I talked to Farasi uh, the other day uh, once he got to Alabama, and I hope Farasi doesn't mind me sharing this story. Uh, he he got in off the plane and had to go. Basically, he had to go straight into work. By the time he uh, got off the plane, drove from Birmingham to. Uh, his location there in Alabama, where he's working at, to the high school that he's working at, Gotta and he's got better. no, no, no. The basic flight. Here was the problem, Brian. He was in his good clothes because he knew he had to meet with the principal of the high school when he got there. Oh boy! And That's they didn't give buddies. they didn't give him an opportunity to change clothes. So my man out there coaching football in Alabama, in that humidity, in Alabama. In his good clothes, looking like Bear Bryant on the sideline in a in a suit, <laughs> and hopefully, hopefully, Coach had a uh, a fedora or something, you know, to to keep the sun off his dome. Nope, D- wow. didn't have that. Didn't have a towel. Didn't have Woo. didn't have nothing, man. And I hope for Rossi, I hope you don't mind me sharing that, but I just had I just had to share that with the people. Uh, God Rossi. bless it. Jeremiah Clark. Uh, evening, uh, Deron Waters. Uh, Says hell, Wildcats! Hey, y'all, saw, y'all signed the quarterback from VUL down there on the beach. Uh, they the quarterback from VUL last year. I'm well, assuming that thing. was the, well. If that if it's the one that I'm thinking about, he put up some stats for VUL. Then you know VUL played uh, uh, some good competition, and he put up some good numbers there. Okay. Good. Yeah, thank you, them. Edwin. Edwin summed it up right there. Oh, oh, band talk got on jokes. Got jokes right now. Say he had his shirt shoes on. I, I hope he had the hard bottoms on too. Uh, while he was out there in uh, suffering in on that grass. Yeah, Chuck Hunt being a historian, love it. <laughs> Brian actually wore a, a hounds tooth hat. I have no idea how that's different than a fedora, but I will take your word on it. Chuck. Look, I don't care what it is. It kept the sun off his head. That's all that matters. It, it did. It did. Emmy Jones, happy four. What's good, Jeff, Ro- Jeff Roberts, Aggie Pride. Aggie, Aggie Pride? Pride? Aggie Pride. All right, Brian, let's get back to the uh, meat of this show. On Tuesday's show, we went over, Charles and I went over the FCS homecoming schedule for our HBCUs. Today, we're going to go over the D2s and NAIAs. And I'm not going to lie to y'all, uh, everybody. Brian did about 90% of this work putting this uh, information together. I just helped him fill in a few blanks on some uh, dates that he did not know that I was able to ascertain. So let's start off with September 28th, Brian. First homecoming out the gate on both levels is Johnson C. Smith, and they will be hosting Bluefield State on the on the twenty eighth. And stop me at any one of these games if you want to uh, make that's the other way game. around. That's the other way around. Blue Bluefield, Bluefield State. is at Johnson C. State Smith. I'm Bluefield. sorry. Yeah, Bluefield at Johnson C. Smith. Mm-hmm. And and that's the one I just told you about. That I you think it, I would have got that one right. Exactly. <laughs> I don't, out of all of them. And stop me if you want to talk about any of these uh, games, uh, Brian. September, uh, excuse me, October 5th, we've got Kentucky State. Uh, Hosting Lane. L- Lane. Lane's at Kentucky State. All right, I'm reading the Matrix backwards. All right, I got it now. Central State is at Miles. Mm-hmm. And 
Well, you, Lincoln what, what, of California. Say that you should start doing that the other way around. It's the just just say whose homecoming it is. It's it's Kentucky State's homecoming. They they're playing Miles, and then you got Miles or excuse me, Kentucky State is hosting Lane. Miles is is their homecoming. They're playing Central State. Oh, and, and if I mess up one more time, I'm going to just let you take this segment over. How about that? And <laughs> we got the Battle of the Lincolns also mm. on October 5th as Missouri hosts California. Battle Lincoln of the Lincolns. Of Missouri, Battle of the Lincolns. Lincoln of California. You know, how soon before Lincoln, California becomes an HBCU? They're playing a lot of HBCUs, but obviously they, that's not possible. But but I'm just saying, you know, they're they're playing they they're getting their feeling of, of HBCU opponents. Um it'll be interesting to watch how this Lincoln California team grows over the next five years. I and I believe there are a, a division two team, if I if I have that correct, they are a D two yes. team. Yeah. So yep. I can see I can see Dr. Holloman doing something crazy as letting them join in football, but I couldn't see them in any other sport. They could be a football only school. That's that's crazy talk. I, I, that's interesting. That's that's just interesting. Now you you did you guys did mention the fact that Lincoln, Missouri is moving to a new conference for this upcoming year, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, the Great Lakes. Uh, from the Great MIAA. Lakes, sorry, from the MIA, but it's the uh, Great Great Lakes Valley Conference is what it's called. And, and you the said that like, some of the the, te- the top tier teams are also moving, so it's like, yeah, no, <laughs> no real advantage. You just, you know, just moving into a bigger conference, but you still got the same tough teams moving there with you. It's, it's, it seems like all the teams in Missouri that was in the MIAA moved into the Great Lakes Conference along with Lincoln of Missouri. Mm. Oh, hey, not they happen. got eight. They got eight teams in the state of Missouri, fifteen teams in the conference, but. <sighs> Anyway, yeah, you know, your Truman states and stuff like that who tend to dominate uh, Northwest Missouri State, who tend to dominate Division Two in a lot of sports, are going to be in that conference with them. Let's move on. October twelfth, Central State hosts Clark. Fort Valley hosts Allen. Lincoln, PA hosts Bluefield. Virginia State hosts. Bowie State. Mm. Livingstone hosts Fayetteville State. West Virginia State hosts Concord. You got anything on uh, either one of those games, Brian? Yeah, Virginia State hosting Bowie for homecoming. Man, that's a um and really it's a it's a it's a matter of a it's a tough scheduling spot for Virginia State because the way the schedule breaks. Uh, they play two other conference home games in September. And nobody really wants to have homecoming in September. You usually like to try to have those in October. So it just so happens their only October home game is the 12th against Bowie State. And then the the, the next home game is Virginia Union. Well, obviously you're not going to make that homecoming because that's a big crowd anyway. So it's really a tough spot. Hopefully, Bowie State doesn't take it personal. Uh, there really wasn't any too many options for Virginia State outside of that. All right. Let's move to October 19th. Uh, Albany State hosts Morehouse. Clark Atlanta hosts Miles. Lane hosts Central State. Second Let's time, see. Central. Second time in three weeks. Central State is somebody's homecoming opponent. Bowie State. Host Bluefield State. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on down the line. Johnson C. Smith hosts Shaw. And Langston hosts North American University. Mm-hmm. So that takes care of your October 19th Division II homecomings, Division II and NAIA homecomings. Moving on to the 26th, Benedict hosts Miles. That's two weeks in a row for Miles. Two weeks in a row for for Miles being somebody's homecoming opponent. Yeah, two weeks in a row for Miles. And that and 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 again, that too is another scheduling quirk for Benedict uh, because 
Benedict, that's in the middle of a stretch where Benedict is on the road for three, four weeks. three of the four weeks. And so in that four-week period from October 12th to the first weekend of November, the only home game is Miles. Um, and then they play a non-conference game in the first week of October. So really, again, you know, sucks that Miles is the homecoming opponent for the second consecutive week. Don't take it personal, Miles. It really is nothing else that Benedict could do, given the way their schedule is, is set up. All right. More households for it. Valley. Savannah State hosts Lane. Elizabeth City hosts Lincoln of PA. Fayetteville hosts Shaw. Second consecutive weeks for Shaw. And again, guess what? Scheduling quirk. Again, that for Fayetteville State. That is actually... By my information, our information, that's Fayetteville State's last home game of the season. Wow. So, yeah, so it's senior night as well as homecoming on right. October 26th. Yeah. A Co uh, couple of boy homecomings. Florida Baboya hosts Ave Maria. And VUL has a homecoming th uh, this year. They will be hosting South Carolina Central Christian College, whoever Ooh, they are. Mouth, that's a mouthful. S-C-C-C-C. -C 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 -C. You, you keep try to get that one right. Uh, Sounds like a civil rights organization. <laughs> <laughs> it does. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Uh, moving on. Uh, got two more weeks, everybody. Uh, November 2nd. Allen holds Central mm. State. That's two weeks in a row for the city of Columbia. Third third homecoming time for Central State. Third home so Central State, uh, along with one other school, is the homecoming opponent for three different schools. Central State being homecoming opponent three out of five weeks. Isn't that what happened to uh Miles uh last year? Oh uh, no, that was Benedict two years ago. Yes. When they were everybody else's homecoming opponent. And they they ate they ate people up. They hated that. They hate ate people up though. Yeah. So if you look at Central State schedule, four, four out of five weeks, including their own, will be a homecoming, beginning now, the first weekend in October. I will say, who if you're Allen University, who would you rather play in October for homecoming, Benedict or Central State? Well, again, you had one more choice. Uh, oh, oh, well, that would have been state. early on. <laughs> well, yeah, that would have been the first week. <laughs> which, 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 ain't no, which ain't no better. Yeah, you're right. It's no better. And I <laughs> of the three of the three October games or the three games at the end of the season, I would have chosen Central State as well. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Moving on down the line. Virginia Union hosts Bluefield State. That is the third time that Bluefield State will serve as somebody's homecoming opponent in the CIAA. Shaw Livingstone. Third, third and four oh. weeks. Third and four weeks. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Shaw Livingstone. Mm hmm. And that is it. it for that week. And your final two homecoming games. Always a water. To have yeah. Uh, November 9th which is the last regular season game for our D2s. Ever Waters hosts Allen, which is also dubs as the AME Classic, if I remember that correctly. And yeah. Tuskegee Miles. And for some reason, I thought Tuskegee was moving their homecoming up to that September 19th game and leaving Miles as a just senior day because uh Miles is just one of those games. Maybe I've got maybe I had some some bad information on that one, but I thought that's better. What I heard. If I could add in the better date, if I were advising Tuskegee, would have been October 19th when they host Kentucky State. That's what I said, Kentucky State. That's what I thought that I heard they were moving it up to. Uh, that's what I, I think that's what I saw in some uh, early chatter, but obviously that was mistaken. And last one, Fayetteville, excuse me, Winston State ho is, they host Fayetteville also on the night. Yeah, I'm not a fan of double dipping the homecoming and senior night thing. I mean, obviously, 
if you could. And, and Winston Salem had two other opportunities that they too could have moved it up a week. They could have moved it to October 26th against Jace, uh, Johnson C. Smith, or they could have moved it to October 12th against Shaw. So I don't, I don't understand the reasoning behind scheduling homecoming on the last week, especially that late into November. I, I don't understand it, but I, I will. Go, I will to speak at Tuskegee's defense. Number one, Tuskegee only has three home games, which is not uncommon for a Tuskegee because they always play in the Boar, the Boarhouse Classic, Tuskegee Boarhouse Classic. They are playing in the uh, Red Tails Classic, so that's two of their home games that they mm-hmm. have uh, this year. The other three home games are conference games. And Miles has been a probably a traditional homecoming date for many a years. The last home game for Tuskegee has been uh is all Miles Tuskegee always played the last week of the uh, season. Depends mm-hmm. on obviously depending on the schedule flip on when Tuskegee makes it homecoming. Uh Miles tends not to make Tuskegee their homecoming game. But Tuskegee tends to make miles their homecoming game. And I know it's been that way a lot of times in the last uh ten years or so. And they used to be, they used to play Kentucky State the week before Miles, and those two would be the uh, two homecoming opponents. So any of those games uh tickle your fancy there, Brian? What you mean the last week? Oh, those last couple of weeks. November well, homecomings, any of them tickle your fancy? I mean, just the how big those games are. You know, Edward Waters Allen, Tuskegee Miles, that could Tuskegee Miles could uh what determine a playoff spot. I mean a championship right, spot. A championship spot, so yeah. All right. Well, with that, we'll come back after the break and we'll close out with some more news and notes and talk a little bit about your entrees today on 4th of July. Somebody put that menu in the chat while we're going uh, on break and uh, make make me jealous for the plate that I did not get. Exactly. Even though I got, I'm cooking, I'm cooking something and I got something cooking. I just don't, I don't think I'll get to eat it because it's kind of late. So I, I just kind of just serve as lunch for tomorrow, I guess. Yeah. Make us jealous in the chat, y'all. Show off that big you for the day. We'll be back right here on Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Brian AD. If you think all pads are exactly the same, think again. This is Always Ultra Thin's reinvented with the Always Triple Protection System. This pad wicks gushes 90% faster, absorbs even more so you can feel dry, and locks odors in. Rethink your pad for up to 100% leak-free and odor-free comfort with the totally reinvented Always Ultra Thins. This is always like never before. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay, call Cuvay. As technology continues to bring changes to the world of education, it's time we also reimagine teacher professional development. Gone are the days of one-size-fits-all learning that can only be accessed at a specific time and place. The Stride PD Center is an on-demand library of mobile-friendly courses that allow educators to learn anytime and anywhere. Our dynamic courses provide bite-sized learning and help educators advance their knowledge while also gaining professional development hours. The best professional development plans are those that include a level of flexibility and choice for educators. Whether you're a teacher, school, or district, 
Visit us today to take charge of your learning. Press the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if you're clean, if they want a law, yeah, and who the fuck, who the fuck. So listen to Professor, uh, yes sir, yes sir, and pay attention, boy. cause he gon' teach a lesson. Yeah. I want to mess up your groove, there, man. That's all right. That's all right. You know, I, I love the uh, I love the theme song. I love the theme song. So, yeah. back here on Doctor Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with the Sports Rap Takeover of the Lab, Brian and AD here. Hey, uh, you know, Brian, what is a Fourth of July without Joey Chestnut or Kobayashi in the hot dog eating contest? Well, you found out this year because neither one of those two gentlemen were in the contest. I tell you what, um, it was interesting to watch. I I got to share this because since you brought it up, the the guy who does the introductions, that is a I I I when I do like student pep rallies like for my at my high school, I strive to be that good. He set up one guy's introduction. Basically saying that, uh, um, oh, I'm going to paraphrase, try to be real quick here. He basically said, uh, this competitor plays uh, some video games. Le Legend 7 uh, played it so much that his girlfriend said that they needed to reevaluate their relationship. He was ecstatic <laughs> because it gave him more time to focus on competitive eating and with that he has become a competitive eater that has done x y and z blah blah i mean basically flip the whole like, like this guy's whole loot he basically you would have thought this guy was a loser at first the way he set it up and then he totally flipped it and like it was great it was great so anyway um yeah you know a guy who came out of retirement ended up winning the hot dog eating contest i I was mad I didn't get a chance to lay some action on it, Drew, because... How, how do you come out of retirement for the hot dog eating contest? You, you break your diet? Well, the guy apparently <laughs> had been a former professional eater, and I guess he got tired of losing to Joey Chestnut, I'm, I'm guessing. And this is, the, this is the one year where Chestnut's not there, so it was like, hell, let me come back. This is a good time to come back. And sure enough, I, I was listening to the radio this morning, you know, where I get some information, and somebody said... Watch for this guy. Look the wager on this guy to win. And his odds were long, Drew. I mean, ten dollars would have paid for a couple of uh a couple of dinners. That's all I'm gonna say. And I was so mad when I saw that this dude had won. I was like, oh damn it. Texas steak dinners. Yes, yes. It would it would it would have paid for some Texas steak dinners, some some Kobe Kobe dinners, and maybe even a, a few Texas Brazil dinners as well. I got you. I got you. Um, th th let me get into this story why it's still on my mind before I get into more of this 4th of July, uh, July stuff, July 4th stuff. Uh, last story that I wanted to get into is uh, now, now my mouse don't want to act right on my computer screen. Uh -oh. This comes courtesy of HBCU Game Day. HBCU athletic director appointed to NCAA football. Oversight Committee. Uh, Morgan State Uni University's Vice President and Director of Intercollegiate Athletics, Dina Freeman Patton, has been appointed to the NCAA Division I Football Championship Sub Series, that's FCS Oversight Committee. The prestigious role will see the HBCU Administrator serve a four year term concluding on June 30th, 2028. Freeman Patton, who is ending her third year at Morgan State, joins a team of administrators tasked with enhancing the development of FCS football with a focus on prioritizing a well-rounded student-athlete experience, student-athletes' personal growth, and leadership development. The Football Oversight Committee will make recommendations related to regular season and postseason football, enhance the student-athlete educational experience, promote student-athlete personal growth and leadership development, and work in conjunction with the appropriate governance entities to provide 
solutions to issues impacting health and safety of, of football student athletes. Uh, Freeman Patton expressed her excitement about the appointment, stating, I am excited to be appointed to the FCS Oversight Committee, and I will look forward to advancing the sport of football. Last thing, FCS Oversight Committee supervises procedures for licensing of postseason bowls and qualifications and or selection procedures for the FCS championship. The committee reviews recommendations from the NCAA Division I Football Championship Committee and processes other issues related to the administration of the FCS championship. Brian, what does that how significant is that that we have a HBCU person on this committee? You know, we just came off of having Dr. McClellan serve as the chair of the NCAA Basketball Selection Committee. So what is that saying about our athletic directors here within the HBCU diaspora? Uh, this may be not this this may not be the take you thought. Uh, I was going to give, but I'm kind of surprised because your school is a part of a conference that doesn't participate in the playoffs, meaning they don't send their champion. Now, sure, any school could qualify, but you're not an actively engaged member of the playoffs. So... It's interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, it's great to have representation, but how far does that go? You know, um, so that that I mean, I'm happy for. Uh, I, I mean, congratulations on the appointment. But again, the difference, you know, whereas Dr. McClellan being a part of the NCAA tournament, uh, every SWAC school gets a chance to be a part of that and then dr mcclellan is even able to provide insight for athletic directors into how to improve the conference standing which they totally ignore but anyway i mean that's another that's another that's another, that's another, that's another that's another show uh, but you know just having that knowledge and representation is great but when you have it you got to use it so can I, can I make a confession, Brian? Please, I'm sure. If you would have read that story and asked me that question that I asked you, yeah, my reaction would have been exactly the same <laughs> thing because that is exactly what I was thinking in Great so many words. We've been working together for too long. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it's, it, which – I wonder if they, re they really said something about her uh, qualifications and leadership skills. The fact that your conference is not an active uh, participant in the at least the playoff portion of FCS. Now, everything else up to the playoffs, your your school is is an active participant. But yeah, I think that that is a significant note that you brought out, and it, it really shows kudos to uh, to uh, Miss Freeman Patton on the uh on her on her selection there so uh shout out to yeah, that's a good Freeman point. Patton yeah that's for a good point. get getting that appointment despite mm -hmm. the obstacles of the MIAC conference well that's the last bit of news that I wanted to get out today Brian uh, but I do have a couple of other questions before I get into these uh comments uh as we head out of here All so right. Brian this is something that's really been bugging me Especially as you know, this is cookout season, Brian. Correct? Um, uh, and, yes, yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, from Memorial Day through Labor Day is officially cookout season. Mm -hmm. All right. So, just thinking, you know, we've got a lot of these impossible burgers, impossible sausages, impossible bacon, impossible meats out there. Correct? impossible to eat is that even meat but anyway go ahead that's the question brian <laughs> so if you are a vegetarian and you eat an impossible burger stop it are you still sticking to your vegetarian diet 
if it doesn't have if it's not made up of a dead animal uh then i'm sorry you can't call it meat but but, but that's but that's not the question so uh, since it's not since it's not really meat and it's made from vegetables and plant based plant based call, why don't you items call it an, why don't you call is, it a are you still a vegetarian if you eat a I a guess. veggie burger an I impossible guess. veggie burger I guess so because again, there's no there's no meat, there's no dead animal that's a part of that. So sure, if that's what you want to still call yourself, yeah, call yourself a vegetarian. So uh, I need a couple people just 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 help me out with that one because who's not, eating that stuff? Who's eating that impossible? Uh, you know, I ain't gonna lie, I, I I've gone to BK and got an impossible uh, whopper a few times. I, I think that was the only place I heard they made a good one, and I think I did have one one time, but. I don't I don't eat it on a regular I, I don't eat Burger King. I can't remember the last time I've been in Burger King. So Bro, I got the app. I I I will go on uh Wednesday and get that three dollar waffle out the app <laughs> when I'm when I'm out and about, Ryan. I'm not even gonna lie to you. The Burger King app. Oh genius. Yeah. Genius. I I got everybody's app on my phone, man. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to cut these costs as much as possible, bro. <laughs> Oh from, my God! From fast food to to your basic sit down type restaurant, you know Denny's, IHOP. All, I got all the apps on my phone, man. All how do you apps. how do you have room? How do you have room to play games? I don't know. How do you? I, that's, that's one thing I don't <laughs> have on my phone. I probably well, I probably got about five pages worth of app, five six pages worth of apps on my uh, phone. So. Oh my God. Anyway, uh, let's 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 go through these couple of comments before we get up out of here, Brian. G boom. Let's see. Chicken, sausage, corn on the cob, and baked beans. Traditional. Nice, nice, traditional nice good classic up. combo. You got you got a little bit of uh corn on the cob to me qualifies as a vegetable because it comes in a green stalk. Uh, you know, so uh I consider that vegetable. So you got the meat, you got the vegetables, you got the starch. Got plenty of protein because you got exactly. the baked beans and you got the chicken and the sausage. Good job, G Boom. Well, it looks good. It, uh Emmett, when you were talking about uh too late to eat. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I've I that's that's one thing I've done over the last couple of months in my in my weight loss journey is I've learned how to not eat after a certain time like after seven eight o'clock i really don't eat anything uh you know so yeah it, it cuts down on the the crampiness in the morning and getting up in the middle of the night having to go to the bathroom all right edwin grilling chicken okay. now with pork chops to follow with baked beans and potato salad at home man what? i have not had any homemade ice cream in about 25 years since my aunt died when I was in college. Just how do you eat? Mm, okay, what? Give me the download. How do you even make ice cream at home? What what's I, the, what goes into that? I, I don't know how she used to make it, but she used to make the, some of the best homemade ice cream. That's all I can say. And is it better than Briars? You know, yes. Briars. Hers, Briars. Really? Okay. See, I consider Briars the staple. Heavy cream. Of, uh, she she used heavy cream. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Good stuff. Michael Rodol read it. Dog. I see somebody doing constructive. And we just wanted to give y'all a break. And and if y'all haven't done it, and y'all have to cook out watching us, make sure you share this podcast with somebody. So maybe we can pick up a new fan or two today as we are out here. Putting in this overtime for y'all uh, on this <laughs> Independence Day because I planned on taking this day off. I did too. I yeah, did too. well, but when the provost calls you, you you got to. Damn, I can't lie to him. <laughs> Turkey wings. Ooh, that sounds good. Are they smoked? Now, do you, okay. So, Walter, do you smoke you put, the you, turkey wings? You or you put them on the grill? What do you do? How do you do with those? Put turkey them on the grill inside the foil, man. Is that what you do? That that's what I would do, and make sure you got the wood chips over the charcoal, so you get that extra hickory smoke flavor, or the apple wood, depending on what kind of chips you use. Because that turkey wing is big. I mean, you know, normal wings are like this, and turkey wings would be like, you know, like humongous. Yeah. Oh man, that sounds good. That sounds really good. Even more with uh, my impossible 
comment. Fake hair, fake nibs, now fake food. There you go. Welcome to 2024. Speaking of impossible stuff, Ch Chuck Hunt, Joey Chestnut, assignment a vegan hot dog company, which disqualified him from today's uh, contest. That's the equivalent of LeBron James deciding to go sign with a Mexican professional basketball team. And then somehow, even though they only play in the summer, the Lakers come back and say, whoa, since you already signed the deal to play with another professional league, you can't play in the NBA. Absolutely crazy. Absolutely crazy. Come on, guys. An ice cream machine. Probably, I, have, I guarantee I you. Know, my, I don't even know where those are. I, where, where's that at? What store do you get an ice cream machine from? Don't, don't. I guarantee you my aunt did not make it in an ice cream machine. I, I'm going to have to go try to figure out where a uh, where an ice cream machine is. I'd love to see it. Uh, I'm, uh, not a fan of grilling, I'm not a fan of grilling in foil. I don't I don't know why you do that. I think it keeps it makes the grill a hell of a lot easier to clean when you get done. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, but you could you could coat the grill before you uh, before you start grilling and that will help keep sticky meat off the off the grill you know but okay there is free sherbet on the front that's, porch that that just sounds horrible dairy free sherbet I, I don't i don't i don't know i, oh, all I, know I read that, that wrong it, what i read that wrong go ahead is it sherbet or sherbet, sherbet. Which, which one because that's two different things right you thought it was sherbet yeah, I glanced at it. I read it wrong. Yeah, it's dairy free though. You might, uh, I, I'm not putting your business out there, Emmett. I'm wondering if you're lactose. That, that's the only reason I think you ought to be having some kind of sherbet if you're lactose intolerant. Yeah, that would be me, dairy free. Uh, let's see, where did you find that ice cream machine at, Brian? Here go a few suggestions for you Walmart, <laughs> hardware store, Amazon. All right, I'm gonna go Amazon look. have everything. I'm gonna go look for one. When we had those ice See that that's, we just never did that. We my I, you know that's the one thing I can say my parents never did. My parents never did that. I look go get go to the supermarket and get you some Briar's ice cream. Don't come back with the uh with the Kroger brand dog on it. <laughs> go bring me the that's what my daddy would say. I want the Briar's. The Briars. The, you got to get the ice cream. You got to get the vanilla flavor. And then you got to get the Neapolitan. That's got the three flavors. All this ice cream talk, you you got to be ready to fly home and either stop at Velvet Freeze in St. Louis or Ted Drew's Frozen Custard. That's all I got to say. Some hey, wait, real quick. When's the last time you had a root beer float? You ever had a root beer float? Ooh, sounds like a no. Ooh, it true. would have to have been in. I would have to have been in St. Louis at some point in time during the summer. Just had one just because. I've made I've made a I've made a float out with Coke, but an actual root beer. I can't yeah, tell you, you the get, last you, time you get A and W root beer. And no, no, no. I can't tell you the last time I've actually had a root beer float. I've had oh. one with Coke. Coca Cola in it. I've even had one with Dr Pepper in it. I can't tell you the last time. Yeah, I've I had those had one too. with I mean, that, root you beer know, in it though. That's a good substitute. That's a decent substitute if you don't have A and W root beer. So yeah. All right, Brian. Let's pick up the show and get out of here. Let's give people Sorry. their holiday, their holidays back, man. So uh, we appreciate y'all joining us uh, today here on. Dr. Cavill's inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Remember, be safe out there, everybody. If you started the day with 10 fingers and 10 toes, I want you to end the day with 10 fingers and 10 toes. You can catch uh, me and Brian this Sunday right here on the Black College Sports Network for the BCS in Sports Wrap, 6 o'clock Eastern, 5, <laughs> 5 o'clock Central. As we get into uh, some of the latest and greatest in HBCU sports, we are trying to get into an SIAC breakdown. Everything you need to know going into the uh, into the SIAC media. Day. Don't forget about Saturday. Join my brother Carlos Brown. I'm assuming Carlos is still going to do a show on this Saturday, as Carlos Charles Charles Edmund, uh, Eddie Willa Brown, 
and Coach Van Petaway break down everything inside happening inside HBCU sports with a little bit of Southern spin on it. So, uh, am I missing anybody? I think I got everybody uh, out the way. And of course, uh, we'll be back next Tuesday right here on Dr. Cavill's Inside HBCU Sports Lab and the BCSN Game Time show. We'll be coming to you live from the Black College Hall of Fame in Atlanta, Georgia, next Wednesday morning for the SIAC Media Day. That begins, I believe, at 9 a.m. or maybe 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. So uh, breakfast with the BCSN next Wednesday, everybody. That's all we're going to say. So. Anyway, thank you for listening to Inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am A.D. Drew, along with my partner, Brian Fulford. And, of course, we have the pilot of this ship, Dr. J. Kenyatta Cavill, the dean, or the provost, as we like to call him, of HBCU Sports, coming from inside the HBCU Sports, coming from inside the lab in the college of HBCU Sports, along with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop. We want to thank you for listening to Dr. Kavir's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab each and every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news in the lab. Follow Dr. Kavir on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, Inside the HBCU Sports Lab 1 on Facebook, inside the HBCU Sports Lab, on on YouTube. Wait a minute, just got a note from the thing. Oh, the Provo says, great show, everybody. Great show. Appreciate you there, Brian. Dream big and continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Brian. Of course. Lecture all together. Dismissed. Dismissed.